So in the last video of fitting the worm shoe, we got a lot of comments on how we figured out the exact angles and cut for the nib. So we figured we'd put out an extra video out this week and show just that. It's an explanation of how we got the points to cut that nib into the keel timber perfectly. So if you're not really into that, maybe skip this video. So I'm working on fitting the worm shoe to the deadwood and getting that <clears throat> nice tight fit. And I've been working on figuring out the joint of where it's going to meet into the keel timber. So if you can see that we have this feather edge here on the deadwood. And the feather edge is, is a fairly weak thing. It has a tendency to split and crack. And the reason we did the feather edge is because it's going to be buried underneath the worm shoe. So it's going to be protected. But I don't really want the worm shoe to come out to a feather edge where it meets the keel timber. So for that, we're going to do a little bit of a nib. So that's what we worked out here. So here is the line for what we're going to cut out of the keel timber. It's just a little rebate. And then we're going to trim out the same piece here on the worm shoe. And this end of the worm shoe will flop in there and get screwed down really well. And as you can see, we're going to have a one inch thick end. So that'll be a lot stronger. It'll be a lot less likely to check and split and crack. And if we ever hit something, it's more likely that it's going to hit and bounce over and tear up the worm shoe and not rip the worm shoe off. So if you can imagine that feather edge is this spike here and it would lift up really easily where if the spike is inlaid and it hits, it's a lot less likely to rip that up and out. And that's what we're trying to accomplish. So the first step in figuring out this joint was to get the end that mates up against the ballast keel situated so that it wasn't going to move because I can't have this board going forward or aft as I mess with that. So I trimmed that as close as I dared and left it a little fat and a little proud on the angle so that we've got a little wiggle room but not a ton. And then in the forward part here, I clamped this down so it was nice and tight, but I projected this forward and if this was down nice and tight, we would end up with this line here. So that would be a continuation of the bottom of the deadwood through the worm shoe. And then on the keel timber here, I drew in where the end of the deadwood landed and where the end of the worm shoe needed to land so that it could fare into the stem nicely. And then that gave me a distance. So that was six and three eighths. So I knew if I continued this line out for six and three eighths, I would hit the terminus where it needed to match up with the stem. And when we figured out where to trim the, the deadwood for the worm shoe, we left everything a little proud. So as you can see, there's a line here, and this is a little bit that's going to have to get fared off later, and we'll do that the very last. So this is our master point here. This is where the very tip of the worm shoe needs to come together and is going to match up with the keel timber. And as I mentioned previously, we wanted to put a nib and not a feather edge. So I squared down one inch from that, and drew the parallel line over, and that gave me this little nib here. And this is what's going to get recessed into the keel timber. So then I could take those measurements and transfer them over. So I knew at the tip of where the worm shoe met the keel timber, I needed to just square down one inch, draw a parallel line over, and connect the dots. And that's what I did down here. So I squared down an inch, went over my just about two and three quarters, which is this measurement, parallel to the top of the ballast keel, or to the top of the keel timber rather. And then I just had to connect the angle from the tip of the deadwood down to here, which represents this. Now that I've checked these measurements like five times and I've ran Alex through it and had him check them as well, uh, I think we're about ready to cut. So since everything is tapered, I need to establish a center line on the top of the worm shoe here, and then I can work off of that and connect all the dots. And once they're done, the first step will be to cut this off, and then trim this little bit, and then cut the keel timber. And hopefully we get this all right, because it would really suck to put a big cut in the keel timber that we didn't need. Um, but so far everything looks good, we feel pretty confident, and we're just going to keep slowly chiseling away and getting that to fit nice and tight.